okay. Thanks a lot for your invitation. Thanks a lot, Herman. We have to listen to you so much. And I have to say that when I was a student in uh, Bordeaux school, uh, we were looking in the reviews, in the books. We were looking at your work. And we were really inspired by your work. And um, what you say and the fact that you like this building, it's really an honor for us. And uh, what we have seen in the image that Herman shows, it's life. And how the space is kind for people's life. We always see people in the space, and the space was kind and comfortable for people, movement, and acts. And this is the only point that we have to achieve to, to make the best spaces for people to be happy. And I think this is really uh, a, a, a very important lesson. I was looking at the work of uh, Herman when I was a student in the Bordeaux School. And after I buy a book, he writes, it calls Lessons of Architecture. And in this book, it is a series of images, reference, projects, details about all, some one are very contemporary, some others very ancient, but all of them, they are related with how the space is able to welcome the life of people. So it's not kind of inside places just decorated with furniture with nobody inside. It's about the real life of people. I don't know. I hope uh, I, hope, uh, I have uh, followed your inspiration. And I will try to, to show you perhaps many projects, perhaps too many slides, sorry. But you will see uh, uh, our project. And we will perhaps understand, because the topic was about boundaries, what could be the boundaries. But here, precisely in this school of architecture, I remember the former school, it was a very big tower that was here. I remember it. And I came later in that place. And it is a wonderful space of architecture. And I think all of you young people, you have to invent the future of architecture. You have to invent it, and you have to do it. We have to change it, because today the period is not so good. It's difficult when uh, Herman just say, fuck the program. He's right. We have to think about making spaces nice and comfortable for people, and not just to answer to very, very precise dimensions of one room, another room, the entrance, etc. No, leave, work with the space. And in fact, work with your own boundaries. So you have in your mind, in all of your minds, to think about what are your own boundaries and just try to make them adapted and dedicated to your wishes and your dreams and how do you think the society should live in the space in the city. So just following some, I would say we have to build simply. I remember this was my first house. It was in Niger, in the Sahara Desert. And the question, it was just to fix some branches of wood in the sand in a circle to bend these branches in order to make a form, then to start to place some straw all around in order to leave the air crossing the mesh of the straw. And finally, to put on top a roof with another kind of straw that it is much more thin and that leaves the rain when it is a rain season, the, the water is going away. So it was very simple. It was a kind of hut, straw hut with a door, with a fence around, with an entrance in the sand. And here there was nine 
branches supporting a roof. Under it, it was shadow. This was my first house. I will remember it all the time. It took three days to build it with the people of the village what, that was close to it. Uh, it was a very big moment of celebration. And uh, after three years, the wind blew it and it disappears. So building simply, it is also this reference of the KSTD house that was a social housing program in the US in the 50s. And in fact, with nearly nothing, with the minimum of material, it was possible to create some situations of living. And some of them, they become from this original social housing problem, they became a kind of luxury villa. But nearly with nothing, if you take the weight of the, of the, the steel, it is nearly nothing. Build simply, it is to come very simple point, which is floors like grounds. So we can take reference of the Villa Domino by Le Corbusier. It means what is the minimum in order to place some floors. It is column, beams, floors, columns, beams, floors, and stair to join one floor to the next floor to the roof. To the roof, this is very important. So it means that this system, very simple system, so we can open it, close it, extend it, making an envelope, build inside a mezzanine with another kind of structure, and then leave people living. And it can be one level, it can be two level, or it can be more level. At an urban scale, it is the city of Athens with this typology that is called polykatoika, which is a sort of huge system of columns, floors, and beams that offer a maximum of openness and possibilities to the structure. You can have your shop on the ground floor or your shop on the upper floor. You can have your flat on the uh, in the middle or you can have your flat above or you can, it's really this openness that allows all the mixity, all the possibility of programs. It's about playing with climates and not fighting against. It means to take inspiration of the big uh, system of horticultural professional greenhouses and to understand the way it takes the energy, the way it ventilates, the way it can filter with screens and the way they are producing some comfortable situations for salads, tomatoes, and potatoes. And uh, sometimes it is even much more precise and sophisticated than for human people. So this is, it means playing and working with the climate instead of fighting against. And then it means that the system for the, this climatic situation, it is a daily system. It is different in the day, it is different in the winter, it is different in summer. The rays of sun are different. We can ventilate from one facade to another facade. We can have some filters, buffer zone, winter gardens, in order to say that the envelope of the building, it is really like the clothes that you put on your shoulders. In order, it is never the same. You don't have the same uh, coat in uh, the uh, very, very cold days of winter and in the middle of summer, you have to change it. So it is the same for buildings. You have to change the envelope. You have to change the clothes that they have on the system. And this adapts every day. Build double. Because precisely we have to escape to this question of the economy and this question of the program. So it means building larger, twice more, building double with the same cost as the standard dwelling to be affordable for everyone. This was the first project we have done when I came back from uh, Africa for a couple that they have 60,000 euro and they just wanted a very, very simple house. And uh, it was the minimum price for the kind of prefabricated house. And we started to think about a house that could be three times bigger. And this project was nearly finished. 
we had the permit, we had the, the, the price of the different firms. In fact, it was 3,000 euro too expensive. And the budget was 60,000 euro for 180 square meters. And it was 3,000 euro too expensive. So we start again. And we make this one. We try to learn from what we, we, we had done the first one. And this one is done. And this one is really in the budget with the same dimension. 180 square meters for 60,000 euro. That was exactly fitting in the budget of the people. So a big greenhouse opening to the garden that people can use as a kind of undefined space, a space where you can do everything, a space where we were thinking that people could stay 40% of time. And in fact, when we talk with the clients, they say we stay there 90% of time, even if it is not heated only in a passive way, only by the sun, because it is uh, east exposure. And when we were thinking that it could be tropical flowers inside, in fact, at the end, it was much better because the inhabitants, they decide to place all their furniture inside these greenhouses without heating, but in fact, comfortable nearly all the year. Simple section, the plan of the ground floor, the plan of the upper floor from the street when it is open and when it is closed. Some years later, we came back to the first project, that one that we could not do it. And we, in fact, we do it in the countryside, only on one level. And it, this was, project was even bigger and cheaper than the former one. So using a professional greenhouse and working inside in order to create and to propose some rooms and spaces for living. A dwelling must offer the inhabitant opportunities to move around. It means about, it's about fluidity and mobility instead of a dwelling that it is really like this one on the, on the uh, left, uh, we can imagine to extend the mobility, freedom of use, all rooms have then large doors opening to outside, facility of moving by inside or by outside as a house on the same level. A beam column constructive system, is, which is flexible and economic, instead of the standard, just open structure, large span, free facade, only a few columns that allow flexibility, adaptability, capacity of evolution. And it is an economical construction by using less material, less concrete or less steel than the other one. About climate energy saving uses, instead of a standard apartment, just with the standard windows and insulation, we think that we can have the same insulation with a kind of buffer zone using winter gardens, using passive energy system, and in the same times, it's a space for living inside and it creates extra space for new users. So a dwelling should have the same facility as a villa. Instead of the standard dwelling, it means additional private spaces, winter garden, terraces, balconies, unprogrammed space, at 50% minimum of the habitable surface. And this is this extra space that kills the program, in fact, because immediately all the program that exists, it, is in this, it has the same dimension of unprogrammed, and then it creates this possibility of freedom and change. Our aim is to redevelop in the city the concept of villa. It means houses with gardens at all levels. And the idea of luxury is redefined in terms of generosity, freedom of use and pleasure. You see that the combination of all these first projects, it brings us, it leads us to this project for a collective housing. And in fact, it is a result of the use of the structural system of Maison Domino 
with the climatic system of the greenhouses. It was 14 rented dwellings for social housing in Mulhouse. So the first step was to build these bays in a prefabricated system, spans of eight meters uh, and uh, uh, 20 meters deep and 60 meters long, a table of 2,000 square meter. And to place on top of it a greenhouse, professional greenhouse that would uh, develop all his strategies of uh, uh, dealing with the and playing with the climate. And this system was the system that could allow the people to go inside. It was much bigger than the standard housing uh, typologies. It, the type three that normally was 80 square meters could then make 150 square meters for the same cost. And then we came to the big problem with the client. He says, but if you buy, if you, if you build social housing, that it is three times bigger than the standard, I will have to rent it three times more. And we say, but perhaps it makes sense that you can rent in function of what it costs to you. And if it costs three times less, you have no reasons to rent it three times more. And he agreed. So it means that the rents in this building, even if the flats are three times bigger, are the same as flats, standard flats that are three times smaller. So we had these two levels, all the flats were in duplex and all of the flats, they had this possibility to have this winter garden above. And then there was a partition of the system in order to create these 14 flats with some orientation on the east, on the south. All, the, all of them had possibility of uh, duplex. And uh, in fact, each of them had a large space on the ground floor with a garden and with a small level above, or sometimes it, they had a small and narrow space on the ground floor and added large space above, organized in kind of duplex. And then it creates spaces that much larger than the standard housing. And here you can see the flats, the, 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 the complementary flat the one that is large below and small uh, in the upper level. And uh, recently we went back to the place and we are making some photo. It was two years ago. The, the project is nearly 15 years old, but this was two years ago. And you can see how finally the generosity of space opens possibility. Possibility of light, possibility of darkness, possibilities to, to, to have many, many occupations, to invite a lot of people. And then going upstairs, sitting in the winter garden, looking down to the garden. And with the same client that was uh, finally uh, interested and makes uh, the, the rents keeping uh, low. Uh, 10 years later, we work on the same principle, still for social housing with exactly the same, uh, the same approach. A higher construction that gives this possibility of extra space of buffer zone, winter gardens, that allow to have social housing two or three times bigger than the normal standard ones, but that keep the rent at the same level. So different systems of curtains that cut the sun open to the outside, or sometimes some other curtains that keep the warm during the winter that can be closed open 
and open to the sky. Build with. Build with, it is to build with what we already have. It's a very often a question of transformation of the existing. The first materials are the existing materials. And when the situation is beautiful like here, when there are this forest with pine trees and sand dune, it is clear that for us it was interesting to avoid to, to cut the trees, to avoid to demolish the sand dune, but to place a house there. So in fact, it was possible to say, okay, we have 50 trees in this uh, location. All of them should stay. And if they cross the house, it's not a problem. So you see how it is possible to have this precision. It means to adapt to the roots, to the bushes, to the trunks, and to uh, combine the steel structure and the uh, wooden nature to leave the trunks going through, to keep the, trans the, the, the reflection on the uh, ceiling, and to go under the house, and to find the trees again inside, just keeping their movement with the wind. Sometimes it's a bit difficult to pass between the bedroom and the bathroom, and finally, this interaction of the existing and the landscape gives fantastic situations for living. In that case, we could say that 80% of the project was already there, and as architect, we had just to bring 20% more in order to make it possible for inhabiting. Very quickly, perhaps because at one moment when we are a bit older after some project, we start to try to, to define what are precisely our boundaries. What, are, what do we think? In? So it's just a little text, three minutes. It's about existing. The existing environment, its plants, uses, views, or constructions provides the preliminary structure for all of our projects. We always try to extend existing situations as sensitively as possible, adding, joining, expanding, superimposing, and spanning the existing structure are in themselves sources of savings and efficiency. It's about precision. In contrast with an urban planning of mass plan, we believe in the effectiveness of a precision urbanism, where the unit value is the inhabited space and not the entire block. Based on the mobility and relationships, any architectural layout is then an act of urbanism. It's about transformation. The challenges of contemporary society lead for us to a culture of interpreting and transforming the existing environment. The idea of a virgin territory no longer exists. The point is to exalt the capacities of the existing, providing a new gaze on the city. It's by addition. We defend an approach of generating the city based on the addition of acts of precision. Here, the transformation of the existing, then the juxtaposition of new spaces, followed by the reactivation of neighboring public spaces. With the application of one rule, after should always be better than before. Inhabiting, beyond its functional dimension, inhabiting is about the pleasure generosity and freedom of occupying a space. It challenged us to think about the possibilities around us and her head. Architecture is about building multitudes of situations of usage, connected and intersected. These situations are mobile and build the act of living. Interior, designing architecture on the basis of the notion of inhabiting means constructing space from the inside and not at distance from the outside. This inverted perspective is in opposition to the idea of form or image. The intention of building from inside out is precision, attention, and lightness. Use, offering the inhabitant opportunities for movement, appropriation, and mood, allows the story of an architectural work to continue in an exciting way. Through the margins of freedoms of usage that we introduce to our projects, we aim to generate possibilities for evolution and interpretation. It's about lightness. 
The notion of lightness in architecture is of great importance to us. It relates to how to intervene into a site without damaging it. It relates to the economy of gestures and material, as well as the delicate sensation experienced by the inhabitant. Economy, we always strive to combine the largest possible capacity of a structure with the efficiency in its implementation and the low material costs. The intersection of the generated savings increases the project experience and makes it possible its outsized nature and excesses. We consider economy to be a vector of liberty. Working with, it's not only in beautiful situations, it is also in uh, situations that everyone is considered like the worst one. Working, it means working with the existing, with people, with climate, trees, soils, with everything is already there in the suburbs where unfortunately, very often, the decision is to demolish, to do more with less. In uh, France, there is a national program of, uh, uh, for, for the urban life uh, that unfortunately, since more than 20 years, has taken the decision to demolish big slabs, big systems in the outskirts of the cities. And in fact, even if we don't approve necessarily these big elements of architecture when they were done, probably today, it's a mistake to demolish them. And we think that there is an alternative instead of that when they are full occupied, when uh, there is no space for uh, there is a, still a lot of housing places missing in France. More than 500,000 families are asking for a housing situation. It is totally crazy since 20 years to have demolished all these blocks. And we fight in order to propose some alternative. We call it PLUS. We make this book in trying to, to convince. And we have Unfortunately, uh, a lot of projects have been not successful, but three of them, it was possible to push them to the, to the realization. This was in Bordeaux. You see far away this big wall, 15 levels. I agree with uh, Herman that it is not really, uh, it's a bit hard and it's difficult to live here but we were thinking that probably we could try to change the situation instead of demolition. So during 10 years, these buildings were left without any maintenance because it was planned to be demolished. And the new director decided that it could be possible instead of demolishing to keep them and to transform them, not a little, but really with a lot of generosity. The only thing that was done during Five, 50 years, it was to repaint the facade and to make these brown and yellow paintings. And in fact, it never to really changed the life of people. So perhaps the problem, it is to look at them like this, far away, not inside. And we say that we should never look at them anymore like that, because during 50 years, people live in these buildings. And in fact, we have made a photographic report of all the flats from inside. And in fact, it is 530 different flats full of care and love from each inhabitant to the place in which he was living. And the richness was there. It is invisible, but it exists. And it is a total mistake at one moment to decide that all this life should be erased, demolished, and that people should go somewhere else. So we think that the importance it was to work with these people and to say, we will transform the building, but you will not have to move from the building. We will do everything from outside without trying not to disturb you as much as possible. And this was a transformation. And this is when it is finished. So three buildings, 15 levels. Uh, each the big one are 150 meters long, and there is also a smaller one. 
and now it is when it is finished, it was like that, and now it's like that. So you see it from inside, you see one of the slabs, you see the plants, and in fact, you, we had on the uh, lower line some uh, cellars, uh, standard plan, and we think about the possibility to make some new villa on top of the roof. So it was to start with the existing, to bring some uh, modular elements for extension, to place new columns, to bring new facade, to take away the old windows and to make some passage from the old apart the apartments to the new structure, to have winter gardens, to create new elevators, a new stair, to change the, the, the bathrooms and to change the electricity and to uh, try to bring them to the best situation. So it was like that. We bring these modules to the facade. We fix them because they had their own foundations. We fix them to the old facade. We bring new columns. This was a balcony before, super small, without difficulty of use. You can see it from outside. At this point, the uh, new uh, system outside was already done. And here it we were really at the positions of the workers coming from outside and the uh, inhabitants behind his window. So you see the inhabitants behind the window and we had to protect about the dust uh, and the asbest because we had some polluted elements in the facade and we have to put to, to protect the worker on one side and the inhabitants on the other side. What was important and what we say, the intervention should not be more than one day. Then they came from outside, they cut out the windows, they bring out the concrete elements, they open it again, then they take away the box of protection, we find the inside again, then the people came to make the new facade and the new windows, and then the winter garden and the passage was realized. And after that, we had some works inside, but in function of some rendezvous with the inhabitants for electricity, for changing the bathrooms, etc. And it creates a new situations of living. Much more space, much more light, much more possibilities. And still this possibility on top of the roof between the cheminées to make new villa with a fantastic view on the city. So it was a grand park in Bordeaux, three blocks. 530 dwellings transformed, 100% of existing in conserved, 20% of any heavy renovation, 80% of light renovation, 53% of surface added. It means average of 50 square meters added to the existing dwellings, including winter gardens and balcony. It means 60% less of primary energy consumption 50% of carbon footprint less. 100% of the building was occupied during the construction works and no move of the inhabitants. 0% increase of rents. The charges are a, lit a little less and the rent is a little higher. So the, the addition for the, the inhabitants is the same. And the cost was 52,000 euro net by dwelling, cost of construction works for the transformation. When what was planned before, it was to demolish and to rebuild, and it means 160,000 euro estimated for of cost of, for demolition and rebuild. So it means that adding to a situation costs it three times less than taking down and rebuilding 
but creates 50% square meters more to the situation. The client, because he has no help from the city or the government, he just went to the bank and asked for a credit that would be paid by the rents during the next 30 years, and the bank accepted this system. And it was much more efficient economically for him than to demolish his building and to rebuild another one. It was nearly the same project in Saint-Nazaire, where we had this block, and we take the opportunity of this block to that was here, to move some bathrooms that were here to the, the place of the bedroom, to bring the bedroom outside with a winter garden for all of them, and then the possibility was to add 20 more buildings on one side and 20 more buildings on one side. So it means by the transformation, the generous transformation of the existing, there is a possibility of densification to create new flats. It's about to build or not to build. The project here in Bordeaux, it was about the embellishment of a little plaza. And in fact, we came immediately back to the municipality to say, but we find it beautiful and charming. And it seems that nobody has for something else. And they say, no, 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 no. The, 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 the mayor of the city of Bordeaux, he will come in uh, six months in order to see the works and they need to be finished. So we keep working on the project to try to find a situation for embellishment. And we came back to the city and we say, we have a project and our project is to do nothing. And they accepted it because in fact, sometimes we don't see the beauty when in fact it exists. To build almost not, it was the Palais de Tokyo. When we found the building in 2000, it was totally destroyed inside by a former project that destructs uh, everything during two years to make a project that finally was abandoned. And after that, this, uh, pro this place was abandoned and we find it like that, totally like a ruin in the middle of Paris in the 16th district. And the project was to imagine a project of 5,000 square meters for artists. And we take the inspiration of Cedric Price and the Fun Palace. And in fact, we've, in the first phase, we had only 3 million. And finally, we make 10,000 square meters instead of 5,000 because it was more cheap to take all the space of one level instead to divide it. But it was just about to bring people inside again. And since it was done in 2002 for the first phase, 3 million euro for 10,000 square meters, and uh, 15 years later, 15 square meters more for uh, 10 million euro more. And things happen. All sort of things with artists, people, events. Build double, again, for a school of architecture that is lucky to be in the center of the city of Nantes and unprogrammed space to invent users. The program was about 12,000 square meters of program and the budget was 16 million euro. And in fact, we provide at the end 30,000 square meters, including inside and outside space, nearly 20,000 of inside space for the same cost by trying to be efficient as possible on the construction system. So this is the plot. It was divided in two, divided by a little street and with two uh, systems of regulations for each. Very in the center of the city, close to the river, 
we decided about a very, very simple grid of 10 by 10. And we have placed different levels. The first level is at 10 met 9 meters high. Then another one, 7 meters higher. And then another one, which is also the roof, 7 meters higher. Each of them has a loading capacity of 1 ton by square meter. And we wanted and we fight very a lot to keep the natural ground as the ground of the city of Nantes uh, covered with asphalt in order to have the possibility to open it, to dig it, and to move it. And there was a ramp that you see above that was going from level 0 to level 9, like a street, from level 9 to level 16, and from level 16 to level 23, to, to uh, 23 meters high. And this street that would be used by cars or lorries for deliveries. So this is the ground floor. You see the starting of the ramp, two cars, and the structure of the ground floor. At 10 meters high, we have the ramp continuing, develop, uh, distributing the first level, and then the level uh, at 16 meters high, and finally, the level on the roof. This was the construction, prefabricated columns, 80 centimeters by 80 centimeters and 10 meters high for the first level. Some uh, alveolar beams to place on the uh, beams, and it was possible to produce between 200 and 300 square meters by day. So the construction was extremely efficient and extremely fast. And this was also a condition for the fact that it was, it has to be economic. vacant spaces, spaces of where everything can happen. In red, it is a secondary structure in steel that takes supports on the uh, main one. And we can develop different kind of spaces at different levels. The construction of the second, secondary structure, construction of the auditorium, and inside this capacity, we had two different climates. In green, it is a standard climate that connects to the program. And in blue, it is a kind of buffer zone that is protected by the facade and that defines a kind of intermediate climate that is never below 12 degrees and that uh, works with a passive systems with the climate of Nantes. You see the ramp climbing, the auditorium that can open to outside, this big hall where of uh, one, uh, 1,000 square meters where the students can make different kind of models. The lorries, they can enter easily. Different kind of events can take place, sometimes dinners. The auditorium, when it is open to the river, and allowing some scenographic systems to the outside. The library and the multimedia place seen from the intermediate space. Spaces that can be used for presentation. But what was interesting, it is to see here, for example, you see one professor that is making a kind of little class or discussions with some students. So it means that in some places that are not necessarily the standard definition of classes, it is also possible to learn, to 
stitch in different spaces and to have another kind of relations with the normal program. Places where we can have dinners, where students can play piano or just look at the river. The ramp is always this kind of connections with all the big levels. And you see the multiple possibilities of activities. Can be sports, events, making models. The outside space is also very important to be used when the season and the climate is good. And this possibility to go to the top, also by bike, to reach the roof where different events can be done, like creating a cinema place in the middle of the city. Because the School of Architecture, it is the biggest office of architects that exists in a city. It is the place where you have all the energy of students, all their freedom. It is the place where the teachers, the professors, they explain where this, it's, you, you can never find an office in the city where you have more energy and more capacity of thinking about the city. So it's not only a school of architecture, it is a place that it is open to all the citizens of the city. It is a place where the people from outside, they can see, come and see the diploma, where they can see what the students are doing. It is a place where sometimes people are making circus and come and, and work with the students in order to make some circus events in the, in the place. Or some filmmakers, they also can come and it is clear that students learn from this, uh, from, from, from these uh, relations. Last project, it is not so far if you have time to go. It is at the frontier of uh, Belgium <coughs> and France in Dunkirk. This was uh, the last public, the last building of the former activity of the harbor of Dunkirk that decreased a lot. And it was called the cathedral. It was a place that was 25 meters large and 80 meters long, 30 meters high. That was the place where they were repairing the big boats and big pieces of boats. So all the other uh, uh, working places have been demolished, unfortunately, and it was the only one kept as a kind of memory for the activity of the... And like in many other places, it is clear that these spaces it becomes, after it has been abandoned, a place where it could be possible to have an art center. So the program of the competitions was to realize in this building of 2,500 square meters on the ground, to realize 10,000 square meters of floors, filling the volume and placing a new program for uh, arts. And as soon as we went inside, it was clear for us that it would not be possible to build inside because to build inside means to destroy this space, destroy this void. And if you imagine that you have four different floors inside, you don't see that anymore. So it was crazy to think that we could do the project like this. And finally, the proposition for the competitions was to double the system to say it's much more economic to build on the side of the building than inside the building. We have uh, 40 centimeters of concrete inside. When outside it is just sand, it is much more easy. And in fact, the plot was allowing to make exactly a kind of uh, twin brother uh, of the first one. And naturally with different elements, different components, different uh, materials of envelope, but it is exactly the same size. And it was possible to make the program inside this 
new building and to keep the first one empty and to create a new relations between the field space by the program and the emptiness of the existing and to keep the memory of the space. So in the new building, we have all the successions of rooms, exhibition rooms, storage of art, and some visions to the harbor and the sea. But we have also this possibility at one moment to look at the first building that keeps the memory and the souvenir of what was happening. But I think it's enough. 